Good morning and welcome to this thought for the day on Monday 28th of February and I've chosen to read today from um, the book of Galatians the whole of chapter one and I'm reading from the NIV version so here goes Paul an apostle sent not from men nor by man but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brothers with me, to the churches in Galatia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not consult any man, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. But I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing to you is no lie. Later I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. So like all of Paul's writings, uh, the book of Galatians is an epistle. It's a letter. Paul had founded the Christian church in the region of Galatia during his early missionary journeys. After leaving the region, he wrote the letter that we now call the Book of Galatians in order to encourage the church he, plant, he planted and to offer correction for some of the ways that they had gone astray. It is a passionate letter, the outpouring of a preacher, the soul of a preacher on fire for his Lord and deeply committed to bringing his hearers to an understanding of what saving faith is. In verses 6 to 7, Paul got down to the main reason for his correspondence. I'll just uh, say those, read those two verses again. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ 
and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. The Galatian Christians were being targeted uh, by legalistic Jews who were not only spreading a fabricated gospel, a distorted doctrine of false Christ Christians, but were deliberately seeking to discredit Paul and the unique ministry and mission to which he had been commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Paul was completely against the message of the Judaizers, as they were called. He rightly understood that they were attempting to twist the gospel into a process of salvation by works. Indeed, the Judaizers were attempting to hijack the early Christian movement and return it to a legalistic form of Judaism. To defend the true gospel, Paul must also defend the fact that he is truly an apostle. In New Testament terms, an apostle was someone who spent time with Christ and was officially sent by Christ to be his representative in the world. The Judaizers apparently were saying that Paul didn't qualify. He wasn't one of the 12 original disciples. In fact, they said he was merely taught by those other disciples, giving him no authority to speak for Christ on his own. Paul answered their charges by showing from the story of his life before and after his conversion that none of the other apostles trained him. Indeed, in, sorry, instead, Christ was revealed to him as was the truth of the gospel. Just as importantly, Paul had spent most of his life as a gifted student of the Old Testament law. He had been a zealous Jew, a Pharisee, and had dedicated his life to following the same system the Judaizers wanted. He knew better than most. He, yeah, he knew better than most the failure of that system, especially in the light of Jesus's death and resurrection. So that's why Paul used Galatians uh, 1, 11 to 24 to explain his conversion on the road to Damascus, his connection with Peter and the other apostles in Jerusalem, and his earlier work teaching the message of the gospel in Syria and Cilicia. So, in summary, Paul wanted to make sure the Galatians understood that he had more experience with the Jewish law than any of the Judaizers. In addition, he had received a direct revelation from Jesus Christ regarding the message of the gospel, the same message he proclaimed. The following statement summarises a view commonly held in our culture. It doesn't really matter what you believe or what you teach. What is really important is the life you live. Galatians 1 clearly teaches us that as believers, we are justified through faith in Jesus Christ alone, equipped by the Holy Spirit to love God and others. God's grace is enough for us. I'll leave you with this thought. I hope you enjoy your day.